am Steph Hodge with Wargaming here with Dave and Eunice Stennett uh, with Egypt World Multi Game System. That's right. So lots of games going on here, yes? So in this system, we have a collection of 25 social abstract games. Now you probably know what an abstract game is, but what's a social abstract game? Ah. These are very modern designers, contemporary designers who've made games for you to interact cooperatively, competitively, team cooperatively. Maybe you've got a challenge and the game's going to beat you. Maybe even the game's got pieces and you use their pieces and you might actually lose. The game will win. So we're going to show you uh, a little bit about the system and then a few examples of some of these social abstract games. So the system is made out of all these beautiful building blocks. These pieces are like building blocks. They are you, really, really cool. You put them together to make your games. Um, so you get all of the games in the rule book, 40 pages with 25 wow. games, which will guide you into the ancient world and how to, to live the stories there, yes. You play all sorts of things, you're building, you're fighting, you're a farmer, and we'll show you a couple of the games in the system. So in Kush, in Kush here, it's a stacking game. The peoples around Egypt are intermingling, and you have your color, and you want your people to be on top. Yes. So the end of the game is here, with people in moving pieces, and the stacks are, are piling up. Now the twist in this game, and many of the games have something very original, is that you've been able to move everybody's pieces, not just your, just your own. So here we come to the end of the game, and it's Brown's turn. Uh, let's just bring it up. Brown's turn, he's got three stacks, but actually he's forced here to move one of the other colours. So he moves the he moves the green one onto here. Um, when it's Green's turn, he has to move the blue one on oh, to stack no. on top of his. <laughs> oh so there's gosh. a lot of crazy things going on. But many of these games have an alternative play and an expansion. So Steph, have yeah. you ever played a game where yes. you're not allowed to move your own pieces? I don't know. But you can move everybody else's. So that's the alternative play with oh Kush. <laughs> that sounds so awesome. <laughs> so then you've got to not just use your mind, you just gotta start talking. Can you help me a little bit here? <laughs> and I see. So that gives you a bit of a taste of one of the games, Kush, how the story comes to life. That's great. Now, did you grow up playing that memory game when you were a kid? Probably, nearly, yeah. I think nearly everybody played the memory game where you have to find two matching, matching tiles. <laughs> so we have this game called Tholos. Yes, you need to find two twos. Your threes are in there, and you need three threes or four fours. Absolutely. Makes sense. Yes. Easy. Yes. Bit more complicated. But there's a story here, there's an oracle and everything. So what I just quick show you, the king and the queen needs to be matched together with the oracle. You have to find all three of these to get the set. And you can see there's a lot of points on those tiles rather than the twos or the fours. Absolutely. Now, when you have the oracle, and there's four of them, you can make a mess, you can get the wrong tile, you, can, you don't remember, you can try again. So if you've got three or four oracles, you've got the best memory around. Well, the oracle helps you. Of course. You've got a Medusa which can only be killed by the prince once he's got his weapons. And if the Medusa's turned over and you can't kill him, turn over. Makes oh sense. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. But the real excitement is the dragon. Now, you know a few things about dragons, I'm sure. I love dragons. Uh, this one you won't love. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this dragon, like all dragons, will steal the diamond. Yes. It'll break your heart. And what happens is when you, when you turn over the dragon and you haven't been able to get the heart, the diamond, and the light before to make the match to slay the dragon, he gets nasty. So what does he do? He steals one of the matches you've already made. Oh, no. And we're playing this game with all the 64 tiles on one of these boards. Yeah. So what does the dragon do? He causes confusion. The board is turned around. The dragon's is hidden back there. And now you've really got problems with your memory. Yeah. <laughs> I do, definitely. <laughs> we have another game here that shows unique mechanics and unique story. This is Dark Death. One player gets to play the role of the Angel of Death. 
Could you imagine being the angel of death? Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> but all the other players gang up with you, and they're the physicians trying to kill the d disease. So the angel of death places his discs two at a time on his each turn on the intersections of the squares. Now here you can see that one of the physicians has got near trying to kill them. The, the disease, but the disease place these here, he's surrounded, the physician dies, he's killed. Oh. So all the players, all the physicians have the same color pieces, have to work very, very carefully together. So here, he's been sacrificed, you have to sacrifice. But now this guy here can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh eight. Gosh. He's nearly got them all, oh. but there's always disease left over. Oh. So basically that's dark death, when all the disease has fallen, are there any physicians still alive? Okay, nice. And this is Raytheon yeah. in 250 CE. The Roman province of Raytheon was invaded and devastated. The refugees are, re are fleeing their cities to go to the safety in the city of Britannian. Brigantium. Brigantium. <laughs> and to do so, they would have to move your refuge from one side of uh, your land here to the other side and eventually to the city of safety. Okay. To do so for each term you roll a die. So I get a three here. This allows me to move to this mountain of one uh, over here. Now if I can, because of that, because I made that move, I can now roll another die. I can go, I need to go ahead and move, this can move over here. Now here is a forest, I cannot move to the forest. Okay. However, I can turn around to become a mountain or a town. So okay. in this example, it's a three, that's not enough. I lose my turn. When next time is my turn again, I get a four. Um, let's assume this is a five for a minute, just to show you. Then now I gotta turn this to the other side. That rule allows me to make the turn to the city. So I go on with these turns, and at some point, um, I also, each refuge has two supply discs. And you use them well to help to give you an extra die roll. So using it strategically at the right time and right place can help your refugees, all of them get into, be the first to get into the safety. Oh, wow, cool. So there's a lot going on in this one. Yes, and it's a very beautiful game with a lot of designs, yeah. yes. Now we have this game called Dreamland. So in Dreamland. Dreamland. Have you been in a Dreamland? Probably. Oh, I bet you are every So night. back in the days, the, st the stories and uh, stories are written on tablets and here, each player, it's a storytelling game, and each player take from the back randomly two, four, six, eight, eight tiles. And you can use either side of the tile, in this case, and make a story out of it. And each tile can be used more than once. So for example, you got a dragon here, a unicorn, a queen or a princess, maybe traveling through the oceans following the guides of the star in the quest for a sacred cup. <laughs> and so each player would just uh, tell a story and you play it in rounds. If your, your friends like your stories, they give you an applause disc. And Plus that would be your point. So, yes. So that is Dreamland. Oh, that sounds great. And then these are all more of the other tiles, just to show you, that are also available in the game for you to draw and tell stories of. Pretty, I love the art, it's really nice. That's a demon. Oh, yes. The nice thing about this is, this is the chance to tell all of your friends what you think about the way they tell stories, the way they talk. You know, Uncle Franz, he just talks for ages. He's wondering why he's not getting any points because he's trying so hard. And then you're basically getting all the points because you keep it short to the point and really creative. That's Dreamlands. So what you're seeing in the, in the collection, in the system, that is a great variety of the sort of things that are happening. There's something for everybody, and actually there's a lot for most of us, because we all like to do these things. Um, so here we'll show you quickly the rule book in a little bit more detail. Um, basically, this is coming with all the sets. You've got an introduction which will describe all of the games. The blue owls mean you've got to use your brain a lot. If there's a lot of owls, it's brain heavy. The white owls mean you've got to use your mouth a lot. And if there's both, well, you've got to try them both. Uh, this helps you to select the games. A lot of suns mean it's hard, and one sun is a simple game. The rule books are standardized, so it's easy. Once you figure out how one rule book goes, 
they all go the same sort of way. Step by step, we take you through the games. So here, yeah, journey stones, you're sailing your ships, you bring them together as a fleet, stacked, and you can sail faster. Nice. And there's hidden journey stones, which have mystical powers. That's you're building like pyramids, that, yeah. you're making roads. Here we have Roman roads, they're straight. It's a cooperative game here, Hispania, okay. uh, or Numidia. All sorts of different games. This is here, Kush, that we saw. Uh, basically, you just Flick through, through. I like see at what the beginning you, you like. have all the different like keys to tell you what kind of game it is. That's really handy. For someone I don't want to go read everything to figure it out, this just tells you right there. That's really we, nice. Even the dragon appears here. <laughs> that means this bit's hard to understand. Watch uh, out. Yeah. yeah. So that's the the yeah. system. It's very different to just a game. Um, you may be asking, um, where do I get this? Yes. yes. Very it's just this. been released now. Oh, perfect. Yes, yes. perfect. <laughs> uh, so, so it's available uh, online. Oh, online, great. And it's available on our online shop, playforgames.com. It's available at selected retailers okay. because not everybody's able to get this message across. Oh, yeah. Um, it's available in Germany on uh, the online shop of Elden Smeed, uh, and it's also available on Amazon. Wow, everywhere. So you guys can easily find this system. And it's on our online shop, playforgames.com. Perfect. So. And so this system is also ideal for game cafes. Okay, um, a great definitely. way for, again, you can also designers uh, competition, for example. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of our players love it, and then they actually, after they play certain games, they create their own games course, with the system. Yeah, and it's got a lot of ready-made pieces as well. It's so beautiful. You guys did a great job with this. So thank you so much for showing us the Ancient World Game System.